No, the word of the gospel is a word that comes to the rebel heart. I am a rebel against God. I may be indifferent to him, I may be antagonistic to him, but I'm actually rebelling against him. He then comes by the Bible and he says, I'm commanding you to do an about turn to repent of your sins and to believe in me. And the individual says, there is no way that that is going to happen. It'll take a miracle for that to happen. Yes, it will. And that is the miracle of regeneration. 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 So today we're going to talk about other faiths and specifically false prophets. Now I want to get one thing clear before we get going here. What is a prophet? Now a prophet according to the Bible is someone who speaks the oracles of God, speaks the truths of God and prophets were used um, in the Old Testament as people who would um, speak about what is going to come about in the earth according to God's purposes and, and will. Um, and there were many false prophets that arose among the peoples because it was a place of status to be a prophet. And so people would come into the public domain and say whatever people wanted to hear and people would like these kind of prophets because they wanted to hear these things. But very often in the Old Testament, the true prophets of God um, would be put to death because they'd speak of uh, the coming exile, or they'd speak about um, the Messiah, or um, many things um, that the people didn't want to hear. And then we get this amazing revelation in the New Testament, that the true prophet of God is Christ, because he is God. He is the Word of God. He is the voice of God, because he is God. In fact, all who trust in this prophet, who is not just a man, but is God, the Christ, Jesus, um, will be redeemed in this life, as in they'll have new life, a new revelation, a new understanding, a new perspective in this life and um, will be brought into eternal glory with Christ who reigns as King. Um, but then we get Jesus himself warning against false teachers in Matthew chapter 7 just after the Beatitudes um, which are renowned, uh, which is a section of the New Testament which is renowned for um, the new covenant of God, the new way of living before God that Christ brings. Um, and in Matthew chapter 7 we get this uh, revelation of uh, Jesus warns us against false teachers. So we get in, in, in verse 15 chapter 7 of Matthew, Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but in, inwardly, inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. Do not do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. So we get this warning from Christ. So I want to look at the prophet Muhammad. Now, I know this is controversial, and I know that people might be offended by what I'm saying or about to say. Um, but I do it in love. I, I do it because I want to speak the truth. Um, and if you want to talk with me about it, feel free to get in touch, but I believe that Muhammad is a false prophet and that he might have been dressed in, in sheep's clothing, as in to save a people group or to battle for a people group, um, but inwardly he was a ferocious wolf. And it says, Jesus warns after, you'll know these prophets by their fruit. And if we look at Islam in the modern generation, we see... Uh, that many people go out killing in the name of Allah, which is Arabic for God, but I would suggest that um, Muslims have a false understanding of God because they've been led by a false prophet, uh, the prophet Muhammad. And by his fruit he has been known. Um, you know, he lived by the sword, 
and he he, con he was he was a conqueror. He was a he was a war lord, if you like. He was he was someone who went to battle, um, and and spread Islam by the sword. In fact, Jesus said, "He who lives by the sword will die by the sword." Um, but Jesus actually gets to the heart of the issue and says, "Well, all men are corrupt. All men want power." Um, and the only way to change man is to give man a new heart. And I have power, and Jesus claimed to have a power, well, and I believe he does, to have power to restore, renew our hearts, our very desires. Um, and it, 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 we've got a new humanity that is in Christ. Um, so if I just think about this false prophet idea, um, and Jesus says, um, that you'll know these false prophets by their fruit. And I believe that the fruit of Islam um, is not peace, um, it's division. We've had in this nation recently um, the, the liberals and the Muslim consort the Islamic consortium wanting to try and bring in Islamic blasphemy laws into the UK. Um, or, you know, it's the beginning of the. It's the beginning of uh, a great evil coming in this land, where we're not able to speak against Islam. Um, and as I say, I believe that Muhammad is a false prophet, um, and that Jesus is the only true prophet because he is the God. He is God in the flesh, so he is the voice of God. He brings true revelation and understanding, um, because he is God. Um, in fact, in 1 Peter 2, in the New Testament, we read, um, But there are also fa false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who brought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Now, we, we have other false prophets in this nation, you know, never mind those that are following the teachings of Muhammad. What about someone in culture like Russell Brand? Um... He is teaching a generation how to think. He, he, he's got this multi-faith idea that all, all faiths lead to the top of the mountain. But that's not biblical understanding. Biblical understanding is that Jesus is the only way into heaven. He is the gate into the garden. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And by no other way, by no other man, by no other teaching shall one understand the kingdom of God. So someone like Russell Brand, the Bible describes as a false prophet. Um, he brings false heresies into the land. You know, other people in this nation in the past generation, someone like Mr. Dawkins, um, who lives in Oxford, and I've lived, I lived in Oxford for a few years, um, bringing destructive heresies into the land. And uh, Darwin, bringing destructive heresies into the land. It goes against biblical teaching. The Bible clearly teaches that the, that the earth was made in six days and on the seventh day God rested. And that the earth was made just under 6,000 years ago, 5,780th year of the world being in existence according to the Bible. But you see these destructive heresies have got into the minds and hearts of the people of this land. Um, where the earth is millions and billions and zillions of years old and they just keep on changing the number and, it, and they haven't got a clue but it's, it's, don't you see, it's against the teaching of the Bible and it, it's being attacked and the, the truth is being attacked on all sides by the humanists, by um, the false religious um, people. Um, we've got true revelation and understanding of God and godliness in Christ being under attack um, from all sides. In fact, the Bible says in the Psalms that the nations um, surround me on every side, but the name of the Lord shall cut them off. Well, I just proclaim the name of Jesus, who is the exalted one of heaven, and his name will cut them off. Because once people see the truth, they will be set free from all this um, false uh, perspective and understanding. So I don't, as I say, say these things to um, be, you know, purposely. I'm a man of truth, and I'm not here really to make friends. I'm here to tell you what the Bible teaches and what the Bible says. And I believe that uh, if you put your trust in Christ, you will be saved and you will be redeemed, restored, renewed. 
and you'll have life to the full. You know, there's there's a true peace that we can that we have in Jesus. In fact, um, we can know peace with God in Christ. It's not by duty. It's not by acts of of goodwill. It's not by the common good that we get peace with God. It is by what Jesus has done on the cross. He died for our sins. He died for our shame. He took it all upon himself. And he made a way for us to enter into the holy place, for us to enter into the holy of holies, to the eternal dwelling place of God. And we can now live in the presence of God through in Christ. As we come to Christ, we're drawn in to the heavenly places, to the glorious places of heaven. And we are now born of the eternal kingdom, not this natural world. In fact, in John chapter um, 6, um, or maybe 3, it talks about being born again. That uh, flesh gives birth to flesh, but spirit gives birth to spirit. And we are born of the Holy Spirit, hallelujah. Um, and once you've been born again, you get this glorious insight into the kingdom of heaven. And I pray that you would have that. Hallelujah. And if you uh, are, want to give your life to Jesus, um, then I recommend that you go to a Bible-believing church near you and that you get baptised in water as a sign of your new life in Jesus. Hallelujah. It's by no other way. So today's uh, lesson was on prophets um, and false prophets. And the Bible very clearly warns against false prophets. And I've mentioned Muhammad, I've mentioned uh, Darwin, I've mentioned Russell Brand. Um, I could name another. Joseph Smith is a false prophet. He was the founder of um, Mormonism, or the, now known as the Church of Latter-day Saints. These are false and destructive heresies that are um, even in our land and our nation. Um, and I'm just warning you against them. By the grace of God, I bless you to know God and to walk with him in truth and worship him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah.